Get your body in position. Sit with your back straight, hands in your lap, right hand on top of your left hand. Face forward and close your eyes. That's the body in position. The next step is to get the mind in position. Think of the chant we had just now on goodwill. And tell yourself in all sincerity, may I be happy, may I find true happiness. May all beings be happy. Because what we're looking for is a happiness that doesn't interfere with the happiness of anyone else. It's our true happiness. And that has to come from within. That's why we're meditating. To take the resources we have inside and devote them to the quest for a genuine happiness. Now with that thought in mind, focus on your breath. Know when the breath is coming in, know when it's going out. Each time it comes in, each time it goes out. That's called the mind in position. Getting it there is not difficult. The difficulty lies in keeping it there. The same with the body. Sitting down for a few minutes in the meditation posture, even if you're new to it, it's not all that hard. It's keeping it there, staying still. Just tell yourself for the time being, you're not going to worry about the body. The body is secondary. There any pains in the legs, pains in your back. Just let them be there. Don't put yourself in the line of fire. In other words, you don't have to identify with them, saying, this pain is paining me, or I'm being pained by the pain. Just think, just think to yourself, there is a pain there. That's it. And beyond that, you don't have to pay much attention to it. It's not going to kill you. It's not the sign that your legs are going to fall off. It's simply that the blood circulation is being squeezed off in certain parts of the body, and this kind of forces the blood into other parts. That's what the pain is. But eventually those other parts begin to develop new blood vessels. So you're educating the body. The longer you sit in this position, if you do it every day, and do it in moderation every day, after a while the body gets used to sitting in this position. It rewires itself. So there's nothing you really have to worry about in terms of the pain. The big issue is trying to keep the breath comfortable, keep the mind in position with the breath. And the best way to do that is to make the breath interesting. Try playing with the breath, see what long breathing is like for a while, then try short breathing, then try deeper breathing, more shallow, until you find a rhythm and texture of the breath that feels just right. Then you stick with that. Once it feels comfortable, then think of that comfort spreading to different parts of the body. Keep your focus steadily with the breath, but keep it open and relaxed. Don't clamp down too hard on the breath. You're not trying to put yourself into a trance. You're not trying to squeeze the mind into position. You're just trying to keep track of something, keep track of the breath. That way you can allow the breath to flow freely, comfortably, without a lot of restriction, without a lot of tension. One way to keep the meditation comfortable is to think of relaxing your hands, relaxing your feet. Start with the tips of the fingers and go up the fingers, through the hands, and up to the wrists. Thinking all those muscles, all those patterns of tension can just relax. The tension can dissolve away. And then try the same with your feet. And try to keep your feet and your hands relaxed as you focus on the breath. This makes it easier to stay in the present, because not only is the breath something you can play with, but there's a sense of ease that you can develop. 
we're not trying to imprison the mind here. We're trying to lure it here. Why? Because all the important decisions in life are being made right here in the present moment. Your life is being shaped by your intentions, and in the present moment is where your intentions happen. But all too often we're not watching them. We're off someplace else. And as a result, we don't have as much a say in the shaping of our life as we could. So the more consistently you can stay here, the, the more you see the subtle movements of the mind, and the more you can direct them in the direction you want them to go. In other words, acting on intentions that are skillful, that really will bring about happiness, long-term happiness, not just flash-in-the-pan happiness. The Buddha once said, the beginning of wisdom is this question, what when I do what will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? So that's the basic motivation of what we're doing here. We want something that really is lasting, the happiness that doesn't let us down. In the course of focusing the mind and the breath like this, you're developing good qualities in the mind. The very first one is, is mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind. In this case, you're keeping the breath in mind. And at the same time, you're keeping in mind the idea that you want the mind to settle down. So it's not just being in the present moment and accepting what's, whatever's coming up. It's being in the present moment and noticing okay, what you're doing that's skillful and what you're doing that's not. And then you want to shape the mind or direct the mind in the skillful direction. So this requires another quality, which is alertness, I mean, actually seeing what's going on. And then there's a third quality, which is translated as ardency. I mean, you really stick with this from breath to breath to breath. Give it your full attention. If you see the mind wandering off, you bring it right back. In other words, you keep it on a short leash. If you kept it on a long leash, you would get wound around this tree and that bush and this person's leg and who knows what else. It's like a dog on a long leash. You want to pull it back, you've got to unwind all the things the leash is round, wound around. It takes time. But if you keep it on a short leash, it doesn't get wound around anything at all. So as soon as you notice the mind has slipped off, bring it right back. When it's back, try to be as sensitive as you can to the breath, how it feels coming in, how it feels going out. Use your ingenuity to see what ways of breathing would feel more comfortable, more satisfying. After all, the breath is the energy that keeps you alive. This is the breath of life. It only stands to reason that if the breath of life feels good, it's going to be good for the body, good for the mind. So try to find what sensations in the breathing process really do feel gratifying. What kind of breath would feel gratifying, and then stick with it. Whenever you find something that feels really good, think of that good sensation just seeping out throughout the body. Think of the body as a big sponge. These sensations can spread all through the body, out to the pores. That's the basic technique for getting the mind to settle down in the present moment. In the course of getting it to settle down, you've already learned something about your intentions. If you stick with one intention, it really does work. It really does make a change in how you experience the body, what you notice in the mind. And then when the mind is settled down, you can see your intentions even more clearly. If you're really alert, you can notice even the beginning of an intention to wander off, before it's actually wandered off. Just a little stirring in the mind, a little sense of, I've had enough of this, let's, let's try something else. Watch for that. As soon as you sense it, then try to make the breath even more gratifying, even more, more satisfying. To 
keep the mind absorbed, to keep it happy being here. And once it's here for a good long while, you, you can't help but notice these other random movements of the mind, and noticing how, on the one hand, they are pretty random, but on the other hand, if you get involved with them, they can really shape the way your life goes. I mean, look at the past. There were certain decisions you made. You had no idea at the time how momentous they were going to be, or how they were going to be the ones that determine where you're working, who you're living with, whatever. And it was your decision. It wasn't just the stars contriving things. But then there was the question of exactly how much conscious input did you have in those decisions? And then there are all the things you've done in the past that you've regretted. Again, you weren't thinking clearly. You weren't mindful. You weren't alert. So it's by developing these qualities of mindfulness and alertness that you begin to have a better chance of making the right choices in life, shaping the kind of life you really want. It's like going down to the gym. You go down, you exercise, and then you don't leave your muscles in the gym. You carry them out in your body, and you can use your newfound strength for other jobs, jobs that really are worthwhile. In the same way when you meditate. It's, you're here on the sitting on your meditation cushion with your eyes closed, not just to engage in a little stress relaxation, or stress reduction. You're developing mental qualities that you can use in the rest of your life. You can be more alert as to what you're doing. You can be more mindful as to what you're doing, more attentive to cause and effect as they play out in your life. And it's in this way that the mind can really find a happiness. That's going to be satisfying. It's in this way that the meditation helps you see what's going on in your mind. It strengthens the parts of the mind that really are skillful, really are helpful, that put you more in the driver's seat. All too often our thoughts are in the driver's seat. They drive up and they say, hop in, we hop in, and then we ask, where are you going? Well, by that time it's too late. You're in the car and they can take you off anywhere down some back alley, rob you, shoot you, push you out the back door. You want to be in the driver's seat. So that when the time comes to think about things, you really do direct your thoughts in the direction that's going to be useful. When you realize you've thought something through, then you can rest the mind. So it's not wasting its energy in idle inner chatter. And when its energy isn't wasted, then when something else comes along you really need to think about, okay, there you are. You've got the mind well rested, well fed, ready to go to work. So the meditation involves a lot of skills. Sometimes we're told when you meditate you just accept whatever is coming up or you just learn how to enjoy the present moment, or you try to be non-reactive to whatever's coming up. But the Buddha never taught that way. He says the whole, there's a whole range of skills you're going to need, because your mind gets itself into different situations and it requires different skills to deal with those situations in an appropriate way. The mindfulness is what connects your moments of attention, so they really do Observe what's going on. In other words, mindfulness and alertness are always appropriate. But beyond that, you find that different skills are required for different situations. Sometimes you do have to be non-reactive. Just watch what's going on so you can see what's really going on in the mind. Other times when you see that something's really unskillful, really is harmful, okay, you can't just sit there and accept it. You've got to do what you can so the mind doesn't get overpowered by that quality.
just like being a carpenter with a lot of tools. Learn to use whichever tool is appropriate for right here, right now, and then put the tool down so that you can figure out what's needed next. And that way you find that the skills you develop in meditation are helpful in all areas. For the time being, focus on this area right here, the mind in position, the body in position, developing your powers of mindfulness and alertness as you deal with the breath.